Hi, my name is Dr. Scott Lee, and a lot of my patients ask, can I just take supplements for my AFib instead of prescription medications? You've probably heard about things like natokinase, fish oil pills, magnesium, or herbal products for the heart. Today, I want to set the record straight. What's safe, what's not proven, and what you absolutely should not replace with supplements. So why supplements are appealing, but risky? Supplements sound natural, safe, and sometimes cheaper than prescriptions. The reality, unfortunately, is unlike prescription medications, supplements don't have to go through randomized clinical trials to prove effectiveness or safety. In other words, quality control is poor. You could have two bottles of the same supplement from different brands, and they may have very different amounts of active ingredients or even contaminants. That's why I don't recommend supplements as primary treatments for atrial fibrillation. So what are the most common supplements patients ask me about? Well, natokinase. A lot of times people ask me, hey, natokinase is marketed as a natural blood thinner. So can I take that in place of my prescription blood thinner? Unfortunately, the truth is natokinase and other supplements like it have not been studied in randomized AFib stroke prevention trials. Therefore, it's hard to say whether they're really effective or not. And the potency varies widely across brands. So this is dangerous because if patients stop their prescribed blood thinners, such as Eliquis, Xarelto, or Warfarin, in favor of a supplement like natokinase, this could markedly increase their risk of stroke from their atrial fibrillation. Another one people mention is fish oils or omega-3 capsules. Large randomized trials have actually shown that high dose omega-3 pills can actually increase your risk of having atrial fibrillation. So while dietary fish has been proven to be beneficial in AFib, pills are not a substitute and they may be harmful. What about magnesium? In fact, a lot of patients online are telling patients, you know, AFib is just a magnesium deficiency. Just take some magnesium and you won't have any AFib. But what's the actual truth? The truth is magnesium is an important mineral for the heart and a severe magnesium deficiency definitely can cause arrhythmias, even life-threatening ones. But evidence for magnesium supplements actually preventing atrial fibrillation episodes, especially if your magnesium levels are normal, is actually weak. Sometimes increasing one magnesium levels with supplements or pills can have a little bit of a calming effect on one's autonomic nervous system, but this isn't guaranteed to reduce or eliminate your atrial fibrillation episodes. So sometimes in the hospital, you may get some IV magnesium supplements, but that doesn't necessarily translate into you need to be using long-term oral supplements. Plus, if you increase your magnesium levels too much, it can cause diarrhea, and high doses can be dangerous, especially if you have kidney disease and can't metabolize or excrete your magnesium levels or keep them properly in balance. What about coenzyme Q10? This is actually popular for quote unquote heart health. Yes, there are some small studies that have been done to show that this can be beneficial in heart failure, but there's been no trials or evidence for using this in AFib, either for AFib prevention or for treatment. However, while this supplement is generally safe, it doesn't replace guideline directed therapy. What about Hawthorne, Motherwort, Herbal Mixes? These are marketed for heart palpitations. But in truth, no randomized controlled trials have been done on these to show any real benefit. And they may interact with certain other prescription medications commonly used for AFib, such as digoxin or beta blockers and calcium channel blockers, which are common rate controlling medications, such as metoprolol, diltiazem, that are used to treat atrial fibrillation. What about turmeric or curcumin? These are known to have quote unquote anti-inflammatory properties. But again, there are no direct trials showing them to be beneficial in AFib. And they can interact sometimes with your prescription blood thinners and may therefore increase your bleeding risk. What about vitamin D? Yes, this is important for general health, but there's been no consistent evidence that supplementing with vitamin D actually prevents AFib and it should only be used if you are deficient, not as an AFib treatment. So what are the dangers of replacing your prescription medications with these supplements? Well, the biggest mistake I see is sometimes patients actually stop their prescription blood thinners like warfarin, 
or Aliquis or Xarelto and takes things like natokinase or herbal quote unquote blood thinners instead. Fortunately, that puts them at serious risk of stroke from their atrial fibrillation. Supplements cannot replace prescription medications that have been proven in large randomized trials to reduce stroke risk and improve AFib outcomes. So what are the general guidelines if you're considering using supplements? Well, number one, never stop your prescription medications without speaking to your doctor first. Number two, tell your doctor or pharmacist about every supplement that you're taking because many of them can actually interact with some of your prescription medications, including or especially some of the blood thinners you're on and could actually make your blood thinner. Plus some can interact with other heart rhythm medications you might be prescribed. Number three, don't assume, quote, natural always means safe. Hemlock is a natural substance as well, but it's also deadly, as in the fact that it killed Socrates. So number four, if you do take a supplement, use it as an addition to, not as a replacement for proven therapy. Number five, focus on your diet first. This is gonna have more impact on your eighth of health than supplements. Focus on real food, especially favoring the Mediterranean diet pattern. That has strong evidence in reducing AFib. Supplements do not. So what actually works? The things proven to reduce AFib burden are, number one, Mediterranean diet with extra virgin olive oil. Number two, weight loss. If you are overweight, losing even 10% can have dramatic effects on AFib recurrence or AFib burden. Number three, alcohol avoidance. Even small amounts of alcohol have been shown and proven to trigger AFib episodes. Number four, good sleep and exercise. That's just healthy all around and will reduce your AFib burden. No supplement to date has matched that kind of evidence for these other things. So if you're considering supplements for AFib, please be careful. They are not a replacement for proven medications and some may even increase your risks. If this helped clear things up, share it with somebody asking these same questions and check out the supplement guide below the video for a list of common supplements and the truth about them. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. And for more AFib resources, please feel free to visit my website at drscottlee.com. I hope this helps and thanks for watching. For everything atrial fibrillation related, please feel free to go to my website, drscottlee.com, where you're gonna find more resources and also can follow me on social media.